And we are live with no one watching, so it's all good. Yes, I shaved. Uh, and yes, it really is that stupid looking. This is the St. Croix Mojo Bass Spinnerbait Rod. Beautifully constructed. Um, the only complaint I had in terms of construction is, oops, I'm banging my other monitor. These guides are basic aluminum oxide inserts. And they're not anything special as guides in general. Like the overall quality level they picked could have been better. Uh, I have seen better on rods that are $50 cheaper. But otherwise, good stuff. And don't get me wrong, uh, for the role of this rod, this is a spinnerbait rod. You can use this crankbait rod. It's a little heavy for that, but um, smaller swim baits. You don't need great guys. You really don't. I mean, you're not you're not going to have subtle bites, right? It's not that's not a thing. But people people multi-purpose rods. People use them for lots of things. And I feel like you know them saving a couple dollars by using the cheaper guides is just, it's an insult. It, it's just a, a fuck you to the customer. Uh, we wanted to keep our money and not give you full value. But on the other hand, they have glassed this in. They have epoxied this whole thing beautifully. So there is a layer of epoxy all along this graphite blending in the butt with the back of the handle and then the front of the real seat all the way up to there, basically. It's all very nicely done. Like the, the actual work was done very well. The cork is very nice. It's a, it's a decent grade of cork. It's not cheap shit. But when you actually compare in use this to something significantly cheaper can't tell you just can't i mean it does it feel a little nicer in the hand sure but if you're paying attention to that on your rod when you're fishing eh, the fit and finish is excellent but the actual sensitivity of the rod the feel of the rod in use like the action of the rod nothing special uh my advice if you were shopping is to go bigger meaning, you know, spend more money or go cheaper is what it is. Um, I do think it's interesting that for the price of this rod, you can buy all the equipment and materials needed to make this rod. You will have enough supplies to do another rod. You won't have a, the blank and the handle and everything else, but you will have like the, the, epoxy and, and thread and all that to do another rod. So you could do another rod for like 115 at the same level. Uh, just saying, you know, nice weekend project, right? So for a good laugh, this is what replaced it. This is $29 at Walmart. Uh, it was listed for 31, but when I got to the register, it came up as 29. This is basically a loose crankbait rod, and it's it's a cheap, generic rod. There's nothing special about this rod. In use, you don't notice most of this stuff. Like, I would notice if there was a rough patch on the front of this trigger here. I would notice that, but there isn't. It's nicely rounded in texture. It, I mean, it. I would notice if there was a, a hard transition, you know, with a ridge here. The guides are physically tougher. They are a heavier material um, for the, the actual frame. And to be honest, the inserts feel better. Um, now, keep in mind, the finish on this rod is not nearly as pretty. The wrappings are nice, but they lack the artistry of the, of the St. Croix and the epoxy is, is not nearly as pretty, you know, pretty. None of this is epoxy. It's just roughed in. Um, they did the wraps here and then epoxied over it, uh, but they didn't epoxy across the top, you know, across the middle here. 
Uh, this loose is a decal. It's not painted on and epoxied over. So, you know, it is what it is. But for $29, it's about as sensitive and is going to do the same job. I'll save money for other stuff. I, I mean, it's that simple. It's not that I'm going to spend less on my fishing gear. It's that I'm going to spend it somewhere else because I didn't need to spend it on the rod. The reel, this is that formula reel, formula limited edition. Um, I have a video coming next week on it because this week is the basic slime video, uh, part two slash after the water kind of thing. Um, so this will be next week, next fr uh, Saturday. I really like it though. Spoiler alert, uh, if I needed another reel, I would buy another one of these. I thought I was going to be returning this and buying something else, maybe putting in a little more money. Um, up to going to an SLX or even an SLX MGL, all the way up to, I mean, maybe I end up with another Corrado K. Uh, I'm not, not bothered. Uh, I worked with this for two days on the water and I gotta be honest, after I got it set up and, you know, got used to how I had adjust the brakes for different lures. I don't have any more trouble using this than on the Corrado. The Corrado is nicer. It physically feels nicer. It's a cast a little further. It's a little better reel, right? I mean, much better reel, let's be fair. Um, but in terms of things like backlashes, in terms of just messing with me you know, on the water where the reel was interfering with my enjoyment, no problem. The biggest annoyance I had with this reel is that it's a right-hand retrieve and I normally do a left-hand retrieve. So swapping hands and fiddling around like that, it was a learning experience for me, and it is what it is. Uh, they didn't have the left-hand retrieve, and I decided that it was worth learning. It was worth doing that and getting used to it. Uh, it's something I've been meaning to do for a while. I was just not willing to spend real, haha, real money on a right-hand retrieve reel in case – Three months down the road, I decide, you know what, this just is not for me at all. I'm done with this. You can't return the reel at that point, so you're stuck with it. And I didn't want to have committed real money to it. This was $49. Spoiler alert for the video. If you told me it was $100 and handed it to me to use, I would believe you. I have used reels that were $100. They were not that nice. They were not that easy to use. They didn't feel as good in the hand and had sharp edges that bit me and all sorts of other things. So it is what it is. I'm not going to complain. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, so just a key item. Uh, if you're looking for that reel, and since nobody's watching this, nobody's looking for that reel. But if you're looking for that reel, it is this box. But in red, it says limited edition. They may not, if you go into the store, they may not even know they have it. They may literally think it's the older uh, formula rod, uh, reel or just not even be aware it's come in yet. They literally put these on the shelf the night before when I got there. And the guy who put them on the shelf was the person who helped me. And he did not realize that there was something special about these yet. Okay. So we have a tackle. We are 20 minutes in and no one's watching. I got to love it. We have the tackle warehouse order. Let me move my mic a little bit. The Savivi Brad Zinker bow. Still have not gotten a ton of use out of it. Um, my life just has not needed a pocket knife lately. I, I don't know. Uh, haven't been ordering from Amazon as much, you know. So, yeah. Hopefully they didn't put a plastic up at the top. Okay, there's packaging. I was like, I dug a little deep there. But it, I mean, it glides right through that. It was, it was like nothing. I've used it for lunches a few times. I really like it, but I can't, I don't feel comfortable saying, you know, hey, it's working great when I probably used it less than most guys use their pocket knife in a week. Um, and I've had it for, I mean, we're going on over a month, right? I turned, by the way, this is something I really liked about Tackle Warehouse. If you've never shopped there, they give you 
all the return stuff and the shipping label in the box. Like you don't have to fiddle around with it. You can literally anything that's wrong it is you're ready to return it right there. Um, you've literally got the paperwork, the, the label, the box. You put it back in the box and you send it back. Okay. It's a Strike King Rage Tail, um, Twin Tail Grub, Menace Grub in Firecrawl. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah, Firecrawl. Basically, spring, you know, crawdad color. It, it's a dark orange, medium red kind of color. And I have these in white and, um, oh my God, brain, green pumpkin. And I use them a lot. Uh, they hold up well. I really, I use them a ton on jigs. I use them a ton on chatter baits. Um, they work really well. The only thing they don't do real well is go through grass <laughs> because the tails are pretty good size and they flutter a lot. But even then they're better than like a craw or anything with a bunch of appendages. Um, I haven't noticed that the Bandito bugs hang up any more than these. And I do use the Bandito bugs a lot, but I like these better when I don't want the added bulk of the Bandito. The Bandito's got that wide body. This is just, you know, a bit of a bolt for the body and a tail. And I don't know. Uh, I've caught more bass with one of these on the end of a chatterbait in green pumpkin, not this. I've never had this color uh, than anything else. So... Reactions Innovation Sweet Beaver in Green Pumpkin. Uh, what is this? Four inch, four point two inch. Uh, these are Green Pumpkin Red. They don't have as much action as they look. Um, they're pretty dead action. It kind of just flutters a little bit. But I found out about these from Tactical Bassin, and I got to agree, they're they're awesome. But yeah, I've been using the Hematoma color for I don't know a year and a half, two years, really liked them, had never bought any other colors, uh, and had only needed one pack. Um, how many come in a pack? I can't remember. 10 pack, I think. I do not remember, but it's, it's a fair number in a pack. It's not like you get six or something. So these are why I put the order in, in the first place. So Z-Man Razor Shads. This is the fire craw, the deal. I have no idea what the deal is the name, the deal. And then a green pumpkin. I can't remember if there was anything special, just straight green pumpkin. Um, so if you're not familiar with Z-Man baits, they're a last tech. It is not the same as most of the other baits on the market. Do not mix them. Do not put them into, like if you put this, the baits into a regular tackle box, they will not be happy. If you put them into a Ziploc baggie, they will not be happy. Um, if you put them into something that has even had a regular plastic in it, they will not be happy. So don't like throw this into your plastics pouch and, you know, think it's going to be okay. It will literally decompose. Um, Leave them in their Z-Man packages or use the Z-Man binder, you know, whatever you're going to do. Don't play games with it. Bad things happen um, to the point of if I'm changing from a Z-Man plastic to something else or vice versa, I rinse, I you know, get the old plastic off. I rinse that off. I make sure there's no residue um, because it starts a chemical reaction. It just, it's not good. These are hard to get. Um, if you're looking for these, the, the razor shads, Tackle Warehouse still has most of them. Um, Shop Carl's had at least a few of the colors. But these in particular, the, the red ones, were hard to get. Yeah, Fire Cross, still what they're calling it. Like no ditches. Um, they were hard to get, and I ended up, that was why I ordered from Tackle Warehouse instead of you know possibly somewhere else. Like that was the deciding factor was, I could get everything I wanted at Tackle Warehouse, and my total came to enough that I was getting free shipping. Some small Yamamoto Senkos. Um, 
I want to do more wacky to, uh, this year. I have not been doing a lot of wacky. I only have a couple stick bait style worms, and both are Guggen. I have, um, if I remember correctly, green pumpkin and white. And it's just not something I've done a lot of. And I have the hooks. I have, you know, the right rod for it. Just never been on my radar as a, a primary thing to do. And I'm like, well, it's it's a good option, right? Like you should have this in your arsenal. It's not hard or expensive to get into. So these are the short ones, the four inch. Yeah, four inch. Because most of the bass where I'm fishing are small. So I figure the smaller ones make more sense. It, you know, if if I start seeing larger fish, if you know that becomes an issue, I'll get larger ones. Uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, we have green pumpkin. Green pumpkin watermelon. I forgot that I did the watermelon one. And cinnamon black and purple flake. Uh, the reason I don't remember is because I literally went onto a forum for Texas fishing, for hill country fishing, and found a, a thread on what color Sanko people were using around here in this area of the state in the spring. And these two most common colors people mentioned for the kind of water that I've got. Um, my water is lightly stained to clear. Very rarely, uh, mostly in the middle of summer and later when it gets more rainy, we get more muddy. But then I'll go to the white or I'll go to the, you know, I'll go get some black and blue or something, uh, whatever. But I've actually never used the Yamamoto's. I've never used any of their stuff. I figured, let's give it a try, right? The wacky O-ring tool, two different size O-rings because I have two very different size baits. The video for Tuesday is going to be on scope turrets and the differences between capped, uncapped, you know, the different kind of zero stop thing and resettables, different reticles and why you might want one or the other. Um, a little bit about zeroing for hunting versus zeroing for competition. Um, it's kind of an all over the place video. And I think by the time I edit it down, it's going to be pretty short, to be honest. So take care, have fun, stay safe. Good night, everybody who's not watching. And take it easy.